So I'm sitting here with my Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. I've had this for about 48 hours. Uh, being that I'm an absolute nobody and periodically don't post videos for two years at a time, I don't get uh, review units or discounts or loaned hardware or anything like that. So I bought this machine with my own money at full price. So the reason we're here today is that I have four things that I want to uh, share my thoughts on very briefly. One is the overall fit and finish of both the printer and the AMS. We'll address those separately. Two is the noise level of the X1, and it's the, the reason that I'm actually sitting here uh, directly beside the machine while it is currently working on a print. Uh, third is the printing speed of the machine, which we'll just touch on very, very briefly. And then after that, I'll share my uh, initial printing experiences with the machine and touch on a few things that I did uh, have a few issues with. So firstly, let's talk about the fit and finish of the machine. Uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna address the, uh, the printer and the AMS separately. So first, the printer. Uh, in short, it's fantastic. Uh, the, the fit and finish is great. Uh, all the materials used, uh, both externally and internally, appear to be uh, quite nice. Here at the shop, as you can see behind me, it might be out of focus, but I have a uh, uh, big old laser. We'll, we'll keep it PG, big old laser, uh, sitting behind me. And there's uh, quite a few other pieces of equipment here that are all visible to the public. Like I have some resin printers and a wash station, uh, have a large photo printer, a couple of vinyl plotters. I have, of course, my trusty old uh, Prusa MK2, not, not a 3 or a 3S or anything like that. Um, so all of this equipment here, I wanted the new printer to blend in with those. And it sort of doesn't, but in a good way with the, uh, you know, the satin aluminum and the clean lines and the tinted glass and the uh, just general like appliance look of it more than like a piece of industrial hardware. Uh, it stands out a little bit. It looks much more uh, sleek and modern and uh, refined than a lot of the other pieces of uh, equipment that I have here. So uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It, it definitely doesn't you know, the, the eye isn't drawn to it when you, ha you have it beside some of the more uh, uh, rugged looking industrial equipment. So uh, I don't really know how I feel, feel about that, but it looks good. Uh, internally, it maintains essentially the same like clean design as the, the exterior. Uh, everything like component wise seems to be, you know, made of, of good solid materials. The frame is, is very rigid inside. Um, and it's a surprisingly heavy machine. Uh, when I when I got the box, like it had some weight to it, and then when I took the printer out, uh, the the weight is all the printer. There's really not much else in there other than like a couple half rolls or less than that of filament. So uh, uh, yeah, it's a very very stout printer. Now the AMS. Uh, to my surprise, this thing is almost entirely plastic. I haven't torn it apart or disassembled it or anything, but it would appear that almost literally everything except uh, like the bearings, the hardware to assemble it, and a few of the contact surfaces that actually like grip and pull the filament out. Almost literally everything is plastic in this unit. Now, I don't think this is inappropriate, uh, especially considering the cost of the unit. Uh, obviously, anything regarding money tends to be uh, a bit subjective, but I think for, for what you get and the features that it offers, I think it is very reasonably priced and it, it kind of makes sense that a lot of it is plastic. It is, it is in a sense, a, uh, a glorified Tupperware container uh, to store your filament in. Uh, I don't say that as a bad thing, it just uh, sort of is what it is. The only thing that concerns me about the plastic construction are the gearboxes for the, uh, the filament puller, the, the thing that actually uh, pulls the filament out of the unit off of the spool. Uh, you can see behind me, I have several fairly large RC cars. It's a hobby I've really gotten into over the last few years. And I mention this because all RC cars have servos in them. And uh, before anyone mentions it, I, I know there isn't a direct comparison between the servo motors there and the, uh, the gearbox assemblies here, but they are similar in the sense that these are uh, relatively small gearboxes with relatively small gears that are in constant use and under tension. 
with servos, the, the primary distinguishing factor between one that is considered a high-end and a low-end servo is whether they have uh, plastic or metal gears. Given the level of engineering in the printer itself, I would assume and hope um, that Bamboo has done their research, they've tested this, they've stress tested these, and there, there isn't going to be any like long-term uh, wear issues with the plastic gearboxes in there. Uh, but I do have my concerns and I will be watching that very closely um, as I use the printer into the future. An interesting note that uh, e even though I don't intend to do any multicolored prints, which is the, the primary uh, selling point of the AMS, uh, the features it offer more than justify the cost to me personally. Uh, just being able to have the four most commonly used uh, filaments uh, that I'm going to be printing with uh, on hand in a dry box because the, uh, the roof here in the shop unfortunately leaks from time to time and it does not appear the landlord is in a hurry uh, to fix that because it's been that way for five years. Um, because of that, depending on the weather, the humidity in here can get quite high from time to time for, for short periods of time, and it has been an issue with uh, filaments for me in the past. So those two features alone, the, the uh, readily accessible, convenient, dry storage for my commonly used filaments and uh, hands-free automatic uh, color switching between jobs was more than enough to justify the $250 that it cost over the price of the X1 Carbon. Like I mentioned, I really, really hope those gearboxes don't become an issue at some point. Next up is the noise level of the X1 Carbon while it's operating. So I apologize to anyone if me placing myself directly next to it while it's running uh, for the duration of this video has annoyed anyone, but I did it to hopefully uh, push this point uh, home a little bit. If you're like me, you've watched numerous videos about the X1 Carbon, and one thing that most people had mentioned was the noise level of the machine. They thought it was, was high. Maybe it's me, maybe I'm jaded from being around noisy people, uh, noisy, uh, more industrially focused machines and or having three kids. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised at, at how quiet this machine is. Now, I'm not saying, by no means am I saying that it's quiet. It, it's not, it's not quiet. I would not put it next to your bed. I would not try to sleep next to it, but it's not nearly as loud as I expected it to be given uh, the commentary that I saw from, from reviews and stuff. Honestly, the majority of the noise, uh, when, I, when I first went to record this video, uh, the majority of the noise that's perceivable when you're next to it is actually the case exhaust fan on the back here. Turning that down, I think that is still on the control screen here, is what I had up was the, uh, the fan controls. So dropping that down to about 80% uh, dramatically reduced the, the sort of ambient noise that the printer was making, uh, because a lot of it is just this, this exhaust fan in the back. Obviously, you can hear the, uh, the, the gantry, I assume that's what it's called in a uh, Core XY, but the head moving back and forth and stuff, you can still hear that. Uh, and this is only running on standard speeds and it is admittedly a bit louder on uh, sport and ludicrous mode, but uh, it's not nearly as loud as I expected it to be. Obviously your mileage may vary and uh, there is a level of subjectivity to what one person thinks is noisy and, and what I think is noisy perhaps, but uh, I can pretty easily be in a room with this and not have it drive me crazy. I don't think it's going to disturb anybody that's in here at the shop. Uh, it's just loud enough that you know that, you know, there's stuff going on in there, but uh, certainly, like I said, not as loud as I expected it to be. Finally, let's talk about the speed of this printer. Uh, so I, I try to make notes. You can see them sitting here in front of me. Uh, I struggle to deliver dialogue without having notes to reference. I kind of like talk over myself and repeat things and it, it gets, turns into a giant mess, but I generally make notes. The only note I have for discussing the speed of this printer is, good lord, uh, good lord, this thing is fast. Again, 
I watched quite a few videos before I purchased this, so I, I had expectations coming in that, yeah, this is, a, this is a fast printer. This is gonna be faster than my other printers. Uh, but holy crap, like when I did the Benchy, and we'll talk about my initial prints. Uh, when I did the Benchy, I had it on uh, a less sturdy table than this, and it was just shaking the hell out of the table. Like I didn't, I was not ready for the acceleration rates and stuff that this machine uh, tries to attain. Uh, even on this table that is, that is a pretty large wooden slab on two steel legs, um, it's, it's uh, shaking the table a little bit. Uh, this, this is not where this is gonna be permanently. I just had it here for the purposes of this video. But uh, uh, yeah, even this, which I, I thought was a, a very sturdy platform to put it on. Uh, it's, uh, it's stressing it a little bit because of uh, how, how fast it's trying to go. And like I said, this is only on standard. This is not uh, sport or ludicrous. At some point in the future, uh, I already kind of feel bad for it, but uh, at some point in the future, we're gonna do uh, two of the same prints comparing this to my uh, Prusa MK2, because it's the only FDM printer I have left. I sold all the other ones slowly over the years. Um, but we'll, we'll do a, a side by side and I think it's pretty obvious that this is gonna be significantly faster, but I think visualizing just how much faster it is is, is going to be surprising to some of you and, and uh, surely me as well. All right, so to the, the few bad things. Um, TLDR, it's, it's me, it's mostly me, uh, I'm impatient. Anyone who's watched the channel in the past when I was making videos knows that uh, I'm not the most methodical person sometimes and I frequently don't read the directions for things. Um, so I got the machine set up which was like totally effortless. Um, it, it guides you through the process. There's just like a few screws you take out, a couple uh, pieces of packaging uh, and you're good to go. Everything else is 100% automated as far as like initial setup, bed leveling, all that stuff. Very, very straightforward, very easy. The place I ran into a problem was when I bought the printer, I had been looking at filament and I found some tricolor silk PLA. I ordered some, I had it on hand when the printer got here. I was very excited to print with it. So I did. Uh, I had also ordered the textured PEI plate uh, because I'd, I'd done some reading and I much prefer printing on the textured PEI with my other printer. Uh, I like, for, for a lot of the, uh, the prints that I do that get handled, I really like the, uh, the texture on the bottom of the print versus the, uh, the flat, uh, you know, just smooth bottom that a normal plate gives you. So I printed with both of these on my first print. I, I pulled up the Benchy file that was pre-sliced. I started printing. Everything was great for about three minutes. And uh, I had print failures. They popped off the plate. It took me a little bit of uh, looking around to figure out what was going on. Uh, and it turns out the cool plate uses a much lower bed temp than a PEI plate should. Who to, who to guess, the cool plate prints cooler. Uh, and the pre-sliced file was set for the cool plate. So I switched that out. Uh, I think it only runs at 20 C and the PEI sheet should be around 55. Switched it out, glue sticked it, started printing. Great, everything was great. And then the printer started giving me warnings about the AMS unit being overloaded and I didn't know what this was. And every time it did it, the print would stop, it would completely unload the filament, com like completely back out of the machine up into the AMS, and it would give me the warning. So I'd reload it, the machine would come back up to temp, and it would resume printing. A few minutes later, it would do the same thing. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I kept checking the, the spool, reseeding it. Everything appeared to be mostly okay. Um, and after about the fourth or fifth time it did this, uh, I, I started looking a little bit cl more, uh, more closely, and it turns out that these Yusu uh, filament rolls are roughly 10 or 12 millimeters wider than a standard roll, and they do not seat properly in the cradle of the AMS. So, kind of bummed, but I was like, oh, it's no problem. It comes with a bolt-on filament holder for the back. I'll throw that on, put the filament on that, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. 
Uh, no, uh, it doesn't fit on that either. The, the, the width that is accommodated by the AMS and the rear spool holder is essentially the same. So it was also binding back there. So uh, if you can see over here, I have, uh, believe it or not, that is, that is an old crappy uh, plexiglass filament holder from the first Anet A8 that I ever purchased like six or seven years ago. And it's the only thing I had on hand here. I don't, I, the, uh, the Prusa has, I have a, a filament holder that's built onto the machine for that. Uh, and I didn't have anything else on hand because I expected to be running everything out of the AMS. So uh, uh, tragically, my big uh, sexy new printer is sitting here with an old Anet A8 uh, acrylic, not plexiglass, acrylic filament holder uh, sort of just haphazardly sitting behind it on the table. So that was a, a little bit of a bummer. I have no intention of re-spooling these, these rolls. That seems like an absolute nightmare. I will not be doing that. So I'm gonna have to look at a couple different brands uh, because as it is, these Yusu rolls will not, will not work in the AMS. They bind, there's friction on both sides and they, they kind of like caulk in the unit a little bit when they're, when they're pulled on because they won't rotate freely. Uh, so anyone that, that's gonna be using the AMS and looking to use Yusu filaments, uh, keep that in mind. You're probably gonna have to put them outside the machine on separate holders or something. Uh, slightly tragic. So I'm gonna be looking at uh, other uh, multicolored silk PLA brands, which kind of bums me out because this stuff printed great. It looks really nice. We'll do a couple close-up shots. The, the effect on, on an item like this is, is really neat. It looked great, so it's kind of tragic that I can't just have some of these rolls in there ready to go. Uh, and these files, these are, I think, called Articulated Dragon. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's Articulated Dragon by McGuyBeer. I guess that's a, a spin on MacGyver, but with beer. Uh, MacGyver on uh, Colt 3D. And the other things I printed, uh, the actual first successful print I got, this thing is actually broke now because I was testing the, uh, the layer adhesion, trying to break it, was a Benchy in the tricolor silk PLA. Uh, it looks pretty good, uh, considering that the print was stopped five or six times because of the issue I described. So after this, I threw in uh, some just black PLA, printed a Benchy, said it's ludicrous, uh, blew my mind, I don't, I, you know, I don't know if Ludacris was the 17-minute print. It was very quick. Like some people have pointed out, uh, the uh, significant portion of the print time is just the initial uh, calibration and stuff. So, uh, yeah, these look great. These are two of the best-looking benches I've ever, ever printed on an FDM machine. So that's very impressive that at, at these speeds, we're still getting, like, this quality. The one on Ludacris is slightly worse than the one that was on uh, standard speed but depending on what you're printing, the concessions made in quality, I think are, are very minor given the increases you're, you're gaining in your print time. So that's enough for now. Uh, these were just initial impressions uh, of the X1 Carbon. This is by far the easiest printer I've used, like as far as FDM printers and in the entire time I've done 3D printing, this machine is, is genuinely effortless to, uh, to operate. Uh, and just overall, it's been great. I, I don't have any complaints. Granted, I've only had it for 48 hours, so it's hard to tell what the future will hold, and I'll, I'll do some updates on that later. But these past two days, it's been a pleasure. The only problems I've had were because of me, the exception of the, the AMS, but I, I can't really get too upset about that. That's more on Yusu than, than Bamboo Labs. So uh, overall, yeah, very good. Very, very happy with the purchase. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to doing a lot of printing. It's actually the first, the first I've been excited to do FDM printing, uh, literally since I bought my first uh, printer, which was the, the MK2 like six or seven years ago. I, I really haven't been this excited to do some FDM printing since then, so that's pretty incredible. As always, uh, thanks for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.